Cleveland Browns will be running a new, brand new passing attack featuring Deshaun Watson. The question is, we know we got a number one receiver, but which one of the following receivers is going to be the number two target? We got a lot of candidates, and we'll go over all of them on this episode of the Locked on Browns podcast. You are Locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LLB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Mr. Garrett Bush at G Bush 91. Uh, sadly, we are now check free. Um, and, you know, that may have been the only the worst thing that happened to Elon Musk today. But that's a story for another day. So we'll let that all be. Garrett Bush, obviously part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show panelist, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1 live on YouTube. And, of course, 92.3 The Fan host of the barbershop Saturday mornings. Look, Cavaliers, Guardians, Browns, it's all popping right now. And whether you got the free time on a Saturday or this time of year, you're running around at kids' soccer games, Little League games. Got a little G. Bush in the ears. Make it a little sanity. Have a little fun. Listen to some sports while you're doing what you got to do on your weekends. A uh, week out from the NFL draft. Um, look, I mean, you're going to blink, and it's going to be here. Um, we'll see the way it all unfolds, but you know, Hey, we still got some business to do. Obviously next week will be a very, very draft focus, heavy week, but Garrett, as far as today, I'll have to find folks know what's on top. Well, coming in today, we've been doing our, uh, you know, top five series of the biggest bust in Browns, Cleveland Browns history. So we get to number three today and we talk about one running back who got taken in the top five of the draft that never, ever really hit his goals and, and reached where he was supposed to go. We'll tell you who that is. It's coming up here in a moment. And then we'll get to, uh, we take a look at the question. There's a lot of great players that have reached their contract right now for the Cleveland Browns in their second contract. We have Nick Chubb. We have Deshaun Watson, who got a really big contract. You take a look at Miles Garrett, who was number one overall pick. Joe Batonio, one of the better offensive linemen that we've we've had in, in, in our history of, of our sport. Which one of those guys is most likely to end his career in a Browns jersey? That's a very t- tough decision. We'll me and Jeff will debate that. But first, Jeff, let's get right into our top topic today. Uh, we're going to ask you guys, and definitely make sure you guys put that in the comment section. Make sure you guys um, chime in on this if you would like to. Let us know what you think. And the question today is, um, who will have the most receiving yards for the Cleveland Browns um, besides Amari Cooper. So one of the things is we understand Amari Cooper is our number one receiver. So I guess this it, this question is an exercise in figuring out who's the number two. When you look at a guy who's going to get the, mo- the the bulk of the uh, touches, who do you think is going to be the most productive in terms of getting the most yards? Elijah Moore, David Njoku, or one DPJ? Jeff, this is a, a tough one because... All three of those guys bring something different to the table. Elijah Moore is a guy that can work in the slot and and outside, gives you the deep threat ability, very shifty, change of the direction type guy. David Njoku is a freak of nature at tight end, can really move vertically, can use that high uh, catch points, uh, really large catch radius, can make some really spectacular plays. His problem is just making a routine one consistently, but, Definitely a red zone target. And then Donovan Peoples-Jones, who does it a different type of way. He's a big body guy, guy that has some, some, um, you know, uh, it really runs some, some pretty decent routes, can use his body to shield off some defensive backs, and he has some deceptive speed. All three of those guys bring something different to the table. All three of those guys have different targets in, in the way uh, Deshaun Watson is going to utilize them. But what do you say, Jeff, when you look at the difference between David uh, Joku, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and Elijah Moore? Who do you have at next year being solidifying themselves as the number two receiver overall on this roster? Well, first things first, G, the part I think about when we're doing this right now is we did something similar. It was probably, you know, in the infancy of when me and you started last year. And it was, you know, how's it going to break down between Donovan Peoples-Jones? And obviously we didn't anticipate the breakout he was going to have. Anthony Schwartz 
and David Bell. Wait a minute. All of a sudden, we're doing this now with Elijah Moore. We're doing, obviously, David Njoku, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Um, you know, for as far as, you know, Donovan, uh, I'm sorry, Deshaun Watson and his weapons here. Uh, you know, business picked up a little bit, just a tad bit here. Um, I think, and look, you guys heard in the last couple of days and, you know, some other spots I've done. I think the potential is possibly there for Elijah Moore to actually be the leader on the Cleveland Browns this year. And nobody's discounting Amari Cooper, but I think there is a chance Elijah Moore could lead this team in receptions in 2023. The potential of this player. Um, and I think with Elijah Moore coming into this, you oh, know, so you got him, you got him. Over I, 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 I'm not Cooper. saying, I'm not saying thousand yards, but you got to keep it. Elijah Moore can be a lot of one for sixes, you know, one for fives. That's the type of game he's got, you know, granted there's gonna be a bunch of my breaks, you know, but you know, singles count, you know what I'm saying? Singles count all the same. And Elijah Moore could conceivably do that. Um, and so I think to his talent and what he excels at is where he fits in perfectly with this. Look, we know David down the field. We know Omar Cooper down the field. We know Donovan Peoples down, Jones down the field. Where's the guy? And it, it's probably a tough break for David Bell because Elijah Moore comes in here just a much faster player, a much more athletic player, a lot more wiggle to his game. So he could be really, really huge here. You know, David Njoku, I think if I was probably going to break down these three, Gee, I would. I wouldn't surprise me if I was to say that Elijah Moore maybe led these three in receptions. Donovan People Jones led these three in yards, and maybe David Njoku led these three in touchdowns. David, you take in the time it missed last year, add that to the production that he did have. You know, you're talking that you were getting close to a you know wide receiver two type of production that David Njoku could have, you know, put out last year. And you know, for people who were surprised about the contract that was given to David. I don't know why uh, the Browns, you know, had banked on it. They they worked with him. They saw him become a complete tight end, and they rewarded him for it. And Donovan here is in this stage where, you know, I'm looking. This is my last year on my rookie deal, you know. And Donovan Peoples Jones, as he's gotten more comfortable, you know, the work ethic, and you've seen it pay off for him early in his career, stuck in a but, but, you know, tough situation where Odell and Jarvis were the headliners. Um, when it was number it was called, which wasn't often, he found ways to contribute. 2021, we saw some growth. 2022, we saw a monster amount of growth. <laughs> so when we figure that, Don, you know, Sean Watson's going to go easily north of 4K, you got to figure there's going to be a second 1,000-yard receiver on this team. You know, somebody's going to catch, you know, another 85, 90 balls like we expect Mari Cooper to. Somebody's going to sniff around double-digit touchdowns. All these guys, every one of these guys, you know, their production should probably go up this year, even if Amari Cooper, maybe it's a little tick lower. I'm not saying I expect it. It could be a little tick lower, and it's just because of the fact that, you know, the talent is now more equal for Deshaun Watson. All these guys are players, G. Yeah, I, I like um I, I like the depth uh, that they have. It looks like they have some versatility. Um, I think I'm gonna go with a, a in it in the terms of this. I'm gonna go with Elijah Moore as it's gonna be ended up solidifying this. If people ain't ready season. for the Elijah Moore show, man, buckle your butts up now. Yeah, they, kick and they, play. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna do some stuff. Um, I think w the reason why he's going to really you know excel when you look at uh uh who who you know Sean Watson was thrown to you had the Brandon Cooks guys like that uh you had guys that can a little smaller of stature but can be shifty can get around i think he's definitely going to be a guy that 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 Deshaun Watson is going to really target early and often on some of those uh, really quick uh you know slants or or drags or different things like that he will he'll have i think Donovan Peoples Jones will have a a decent um, year playing with Deshaun Watson, I think he'll spread it out a little more. I just think with the complement of what, how many different things that he can do on the field to open the field up, to spread the field vertically, um, to get people moves horizontally, and to just be a, a more of a Swiss Army knife in terms of the routes he runs because he can do inside and outside routes. I definitely think Elijah Moore, in my opinion, is going to be the second receiver and acknowledged as that from the fans and the media very quickly early in the season. Uh, no doubt. Look, uh, and you know it, it's going to be it's going to be a hell of a ride here on the offensive side of the ball here. And you know you, you keep in mind you still got the solid running game. You still got the solid offensive line. Uh, 
all the pieces starting to fall in place here. Um, just get through OTAs, get through training camp, keep all the boys in line and ready to go. And the Browns, it's going to be a show. There's no doubt about it. We're going to get through this draft. We're going to get a schedule, and then we can start you know, making these smiles get a little bit even bigger. We're going to continue here, Locked On Browns. We appreciate you all for making the show your first listen every single day for all the day oneers. You are definitely the engine behind this. We appreciate you all for that. Jeff Lloyd, G. Bush, we rolling on here on your latest Locked on Browns. Something exciting is coming to Built.com on April 22nd. Look, I don't have all the details yet, but the excitement is real, and it's something you won't want to miss. If you know how Built works, they have the most incredible protein bars in the world, and they do these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors in limited quantity. So mark your calendars and head to Built.com on Saturday, April 22nd to be one of the first to discover what all the hype is about. I can't wait to see what this new flavor is. Make sure you use promo code LOCKDOWN15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Welcome back to the Locked on Brown podcast. G. Bush, Jeff Floyd. Uh, thank you for li- making us your uh, you know, first listener each and every day. And it is the Locked on Browns uh, podcast, your team every single day. So we talked about a couple of uh, guys that were veterans, um, really big time uh, guys that we that we thought could possibly really get the offense moving, catching the football and who's going to have the most yards. With that being said, we're going to pivot to another question, which is more of a hypothetical as well. And this one. Uh, it happens to involve the longevity of some of your best players. So when you ask it, uh, ask this question, and we'll throw this out there, most likely to spend the, their entire career with the Browns, Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson, Joe Batonio, or Miles Garrett. Now, for me, this is very difficult uh, because I would really want to see Nick Chubb. He's 27 right now, I believe. If they sign him to a three-year deal after next year, you know, that gives him an opportunity to potentially, you know, uh, end his career here in, in Cleveland. Um, Miles Garrett with the number one, one overall pick, all time sack leader. I'm not sure. I think Miles Garrett could have a chance, uh, but Miles Garrett does seem like a person that strikes me as an individual that, you know, is not going to play football until he can't walk. Um, that's that's not what his game is. He loves other things. He has other interests like science, has other interests in, in life in general besides just simply playing football. So I don't think Miles Garrett um, is is a, is a person who's going to not walk away uh, potentially in the beginning or, or one of his, you know, at the end of his career. Joe Batonio is, a, is one that I'm really interested to see how it goes down because this is a guy I could possibly see um, them keeping around, but you know how it is when it comes to offense alignment. Joe Thomas retired because his body was just beat up, uh, too beat up. He just didn't want to keep getting himself and ramp it up and doing so much rehab and so much preventative work that, that he was just like, Look, you know what? I'm going to gracefully bow out here. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and take what I can get and keep it moving. And then you got Deshaun Watson, who is an individual who who got the bag, but that bag keeps getting smaller every day, according to Jay, <laughs> Jalen Hurts. You know, he's getting 51 million a year. So I think Deshaun Watson's contract lends itself to long-term stability, especially when you are a, a team who gave somebody a guaranteed contract and they play quarterback. And, and so I, I think it might be a thing where, you know, Deshaun Watson could potentially in a couple years maybe flirt. Maybe, but guess what? There's nothing really to look at here. You're under contract. Why would, you know, he's not going to go anywhere else. So um, he, and, and if he plays well, I think Deshaun Watson, Watson may actually have the uh, uh, upper leg on all these guys because he is a quarterback and if they play well and they win, Deshaun Watson most likely will re-sign another extension. He'll be here. So if I had to rank him from one to four, I would go Deshaun Watson, Joe Batonio, Nick Chubb, then Miles Garrett. Uh, your thoughts? Um, I'm not too far off with you. And there's a lot of things that I absolutely agree with you on. Um, you know, as far as miles, I, the, you know, miles may not even sign his second deal when this is over, you know, miles, there is so much he wants to accomplish. You know, there's so much that he's interested in and, you know, yes, he's great at football. He's dedicated everything, all that, but this is not, this is not miles Garrett's life. And I think that's you know, for those. And we do get some naysayers. I think that's one of the, the things that people, 
do maybe have issues with. It's, you know, you, you, he doesn't eat, sleep, drink, breathe football. I don't give a crap. He kicks ass every time he goes out there. So who cares? Um, but if you want to get to maybe ranking them, th- there is a little bit here. And G and that bad neck, it's always showing up. Um, mm-hmm. But if you want to get to ranking them here, <laughs> the thing with is, is Joe Petonio is maybe already on hole 16 or 17. If this is, you know, an 18 hole golf course um, and Joel being influenced so much and, you know, having Joe as that confidant in his life, you know, it, it's more of a, hey, all right, well, my time here is done. And, you know, Joel is on the same path as Joe, a bunch of kids at home and probably got a wife. You know, she loves the money, loves the fact that her husband is a Life fantastic. Good. Yeah, but you want to know what? Hey, bud, if you want to come handle drop off a couple of days a week, that'd be fantastic. You know, you want to help me whip up the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's good, too. Right. Um. So, you know, Joel, you know, I mean, if you wanted to go with the easy bet, you know, it probably would be Joel. Nick becomes interesting because you're talking running back. You know, running back, you never know. And, you know, for the Browns, it's – Nick was such a good player, such a good influence that they had to do something that was non adelic They had to pay their running back a second contract with good money. So far, one year in the books – Looks good. <laughs> Looks pretty, pretty solid there. Um, so for me and Deshaun, look, it's the quarterback. Quarterback, you know, look, you can play for a while. You could play for a really, really long time at the quarterback position. We just saw a certain guy in Tampa Bay. And I think the only reason he retired is because I think his, you know, personal life took so many hits. The best way for him to, you know, be involved in his children's life was to, I have to step away from the game. I don't think he wanted to step away from the game. I think he felt he had to step away from the game. So, you know, me, I'm going to go Joel one just because Joel is closer to basically stepping into the bar after finishing 18 holes. And then, yeah, I would go Deshaun. And the question comes down to between Miles and the question comes down to between Nick. and man, could you imagine? Could you just imagine the thought of seeing Miles Garrett play against the Cleveland Browns? Seeing Nick Chubb play against the Cleveland Browns. Well, it would be a gut punch for all of us. It, well, it would be good. Well, it'd be bad because our players that would switch over it would be good. They would start picking on us, and then we would still throw interceptions with the greatest quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. I just feel like if I just feel like if we swapped major quarterbacks, right? Yeah. I automatically feel no matter who we got back, it's better than who we got now. It's just it, it, besides Deshaun <laughs> Watson, right? Yep. No, so I mean, for me, I would go Joel. I would go Deshaun. Um, you know, Nick Miles. I, I don't even know how to rank that because the thought of you know, and look, uh, these guys. I've been covering these guys since I've been. Here with Locked On Browns, it was Miles Garrett's first year, and then it went into you know 2018. Obviously, you know these guys, in my opinion, they are the heart and soul of what this franchise currently is. You know, and this is why I love this franchise and I love this team like this is because they're most unassuming superstars in the NFL. You know, Miles Garrett threw a a dog meetup with fans. <laughs> he threw a Game of Thrones That's series cra- crazy. finale for his fans. Nick Chubb, um, Garrett and I will say 350,000 more words on this podcast this week than Nick Chubb has said in his entire time here. These are just the kind of guys that you want to build your team around and keep them here, keep them here forever. And the thought of Nick Chubb, Miles Garrett ever donning another uniform, I mean, whew, I mean that would be a gut punch. It would be legit tears, and I pray to God they would not be on the Cleveland Browns schedule. He is Garrett Bush. I am Jeff Lloyd. We're taking you through here, your latest Locked On Browns. For everybody, again, makes this your first listen. We appreciate the daylights out of you. For your friends who don't subscribe on the YouTube page for them, put the notifications on so they know where they need to be coming. And for the day oneers, you guys are all the reason that this is here, all the reason that this show has the success it has. And we owe it all to you, man. Otherwise, we'd be two idiots just talking into the air to hopefully our wives and kids listening in the background. Yeah, yeah, they're listening. They're, they're listening somewhere in the ether of the home. Uh, you know, we want to also thank you for get you guys uh, checking us out. You can follow us at GBush91. You follow Jeff at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. 
Well, we are at the top of the, the top of the countdown. Uh, and we- now here comes your this week's daily bag of sand. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Who could it be? Could it be? There's a lot of guys. Could it, Danny Shelton, Cam Irving. There's oh, we, we got a couple more pulling up, but let's get to our number three overall on the board. Um, survey oh. says <laughs> ding, 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 ding. if you answer Trent Richardson you are correct my sir Trent Richardson um, after his first year little almost like 900 some odd yards almost Three got a thousand something something yards per carry yep. yeah he, he almost he almost got um, the thousand yard rushing uh, season when you look at when you look at it like that but guess what rushing seasons for a thousand is not that impressive as it used to be with 14 games uh, left Cleveland they gave up on him after gave up on him after his two, second year and ended up trading him to the new new uh excuse me Indianapolis Colts. Colts for a first round pick so you look at that pick and it was just like wow you know to, for him to be fizzled out and it was almost like the Browns like it was false advertisement it was like he pulled up showed up and they were like um yeah we were looking for Trent Richardson and guess what they weren't getting that type of production he had in Alabama they did not get that level of production he it looked like his vision was just horrible I've never seen people run into the backs of their linemen that much and he was consistently doing that he goes on and uh you know bounces are under lead a lot and he ends up in the NFL. I think he played in the interview, you're at USFL, all these places. And it was, I always found it ironic that you went all these places, you were unanimous, one number one running back coming out of the league or coming out of NCAA uh, football. Why was it you're not able to translate? I, I, I don't understand why it didn't translate. He was strong as an ox, he had a, a, a mover and maneuverability, he could catch the ball, he, he, he was doing everything. Why in the heck did he not really pop off like that, in your opinion, Jeff? It's, you know, and I hate to say it's simple, and you actually dropped the one word. It was vision, man. You know, look, when you were at Alabama, and, you know, while Trent Richardson was at Alabama, they won two national championships. And, you know, his monster year, which was his junior year, which led. And keep in mind, the Browns traded up yep. to get Trent Richardson in that draft. Um, and we'll get to, I'm going to close. Uh, I'll get to that here in one second. But when you were running behind that Alabama line, and keep in mind, this is in the Alabama now that we're talking about where Tua won with his arm, where they're about to have the number one overall pick, most likely, in their quarterback again. Back in those days, Alabama didn't throw much, man. You know, they, they ran the ball, they ran some play action, they ran some screens. But basically, they said, our bigs are better than your bigs on both sides of the ball. And until that changes, we're not going to change. Eventually, Nick Saban did change the way they're doing things down there. But when you, uh, you know, you're running, you know, an off tackle play and your left tackle is an All-American, your right tackle is an All-American, your tight end is probably one of the best blocking tight ends in all of college football. Guess what? All I'm doing is jogging in a straight line. Now, when he got to the NFL and now, you know, his holes at Alabama were like this. You get to the NFL, the holes are like this. And you've got to be able to adapt on the fly. And guess what? You see the hole. The daylight's there. But guess what? You've got two strides in the daylight. And then it's how am I beating the linebacker? How am I beating the safety that's walked up? And Trent Richardson, you know, it's sad because he just didn't have it. And, you know, there are, you know, a lot, a lot of draft folks missed on Trent Richardson because you want to know what? He didn't have to make second and third moves at Alabama. So you can't say, oh, well, he can't do it because you never saw him have to do it when he was at Alabama. But this is what I'm going to close with here as far as the Trent Richardson thing. How amazing was it? And I don't, because I'm pretty sure the Trent Richardson pick that they got back from the Colts may have led to Justin Gilbert. So these may be tied into one here. But the fact that Trent Richardson was running for like 3.33 yards per carry, rough. And the Browns traded him, I guess it was 18 games because he had his rookie year. And I think it was two games year two. And they traded him to the Annapolis Colts. 
He was but still somehow up. got a first. You know, I mean, running up uh, offensive linemen's can, dropping the ball, fumbling the ball. You know, and everybody thought he was going to hit. But the fact that the Browns were actually able to trade him away and still recoup another first-round pick, that was one of the better moves of some of the dark times for the Cle- Cleveland Browns. Um, but Trent Richardson, you know, said to lump you in here with the rest of these guys. But just another guy, it didn't work out. And, you know, for you Browns fans where it went from 2010 to about 2018 where you started to feel a little bit better about your fan base. I mean, I'm sorry, about your franchise. Um, it, these are the reasons why. It's the Justin Gilberts of the world. It's the Mingos of the world. It's the Trent Richardsons of the world because these guys just didn't hit. And these are coming back to back to back too, Jeff. You I mean, know, I mean we're, we've literally kind of just covered three drafts in a row. And boom, you know, boom missed, 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 missed. And that'll set your organization back years. And if you see it, we got set back some years, especially with the quarterback position. I, I will I will say this in, in terms of Trent Richardson and some of these busts that we talked about here. The greatest thing about the Browns was not only was it epic, it was it was pick after pick after pick. But some of those sort of drafts, they had multiple picks, Jeff. Multiple. <laughs> the, these these two first and round picks two. and missed on two. And we are only at number three. Wait till you see number two. Boy, I tell you, this this is depressing. As, as, as a matter of fact, coming up on Friday's show, we will get to the number two biggest Browns bus since 2010. As always, let us know what you think. Uh, what did you think about uh, Trent Richardson being a bus? Did you think, um, you know, he had more potential than he did? Or did you think he was going to be a bus coming out of Alabama? Um, go ahead and throw that in the comment section. We will talk about that as well. And then on Friday's show, we will definitely get to the uh, second biggest bus in Browns history since 2010. Uh, and, you know, now look, you know, as I was mentioning, look, where we got from the NFL draft, uh, you know, for Browns, you know, most likely the party starts on Friday, day two. Um, you know, for me, it's still one of my – It's it'll always be one of my favorite sporting events of the year. Um, and it just – Things I do remember, you know, in, in watching guys get selected. Um, when I was first with my wife, and uh, it was it was Aaron Rodgers sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. They finally took him out of the green room, and my wife, I feel bad for the kid. You know, obviously it turned out well, but it, it's just a great, great sporting event. And you know, obviously more Brown. You know, draft coverage will pick up here. We're going to start hitting on you know ideal picks, crazy picks, 74, 98, 111, all that good stuff here. He is Garrett Bush, ultimate Cleveland sports show panelist, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1 on YouTube. Uh, guys over there just crush it, do a fantastic job. Browns coverage, Guardians coverage, Cavaliers coverage. Heck, they might order, argue an ice cream flavor one day because, you know, that may have just been the reason it came on down to it. 92.3, the fan, on-air personality. Garrett's uh, the barbershop show every Saturday morning. Does a fantastic job over there. Wide rate range of topics right now. You can always check that out. Anything else, if you, you know, want to make sure where it's at, at GBush91, you know, follow Garrett. You make sure you have all that there. Check mark and no check mark. GBush is 100% the real thing. Myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. The show at Lockdown Browns. Everybody that makes us your first listen, we love you. We appreciate you. All the day oneers, man, you guys are just a phenomenal, phenomenal bunch of people. All this being said, this has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB. On ELOB, let's go Browns.